<clears throat> Bill and Lily Scout are my parents. My grandparents are in Mistio Oksakoiputak. That's Mr. Emil Scout and Elizabeth Scout. Ok, amo ni Krista un atsu toi. Ok, katsi komikamu saki. That's Ben Strangling Wolf and Lucy. Lucy fighting the battle, Strangling Wolf. Those are my grandparents. My great grandfather is Anistau Apomachka. But I don't know my great grandmother on Ben Strangling Wolf's side. On my, my dad's side, my great grandfather is Emil Scout. Oh no, not Emil. Uh, Bob Tail Chief is my great grandfather. That's how he's my great grandfather. He's a sister to my great grandmother. That's Emil Scout's uh, mother. Mook Scout is an English name because. Emil didn't have a name. His name was Imisti. He didn't have a, an English name. So when he went to uh, school in Calgary, uh, he, they, the priests and the nuns gave him the name Emil Scout. So that's how we we have that name, we received that name. Oak okay. Bob Tail Chief, he never had an English name. The Bob Tail Chief was his Blackfoot name, Anastani Tenemska. Oki Chisina, that's Bob Tail Chief, Chisina. That, those are his names. And his his wife is Natsukapui Sisriaki, that's my great-great-grandmother. Okay. Okay, well, we're, we're, we're working on this project, eh? And, um, na Nipitama, you know, she's kind of overseeing this whole project. She's asking, I'd like to know how we can return back to caring for our people, the collective, with meat from our hunters. So we're looking at buying a bunch of freezers for Nixie Six of Gates at the beach. So, yeah. And maybe root cellars and, uh, you know, looking at community gardens, trying to look more towards food sovereignty. And, uh, you know, return to our ways of life in terms of our diet, our um, mobility, our, 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 our fitness. Yeah. You know, so that we can reduce obesity. Yeah. Reduce cancer, reduce diabetes, yeah. you know, be more healthy people. How can we do that? So my first question is, how has our modern diet affected our health and our well-being amongst our people? Or the modern diet? Yeah, so when I ask you a question, so how has the modern diet affected our health and well-being? Well, the modern diet has affected our, you know what I mean? Kind of almost repeat the question. Yeah. So that way I don't have to, because you can't hear me. Yeah. So that way if you, if you ask the question to yourself, then answer. So i ask again, how has our modern diet, fast foods, processed foods, salt, sugar, how has that affected our health and our well-being amongst the Blackfoot people? How how it's how it's affect our modern the modern diet has affect 
um, our people in a very, I guess I would say in a very negative way because we never had salt, we never had any kind of seasoning in our, in our diet before. We never had sugar and our, our flour, at, I remember way back, our flour was made for us from our own wheat, our own, you know, we grow our own wheat and they make our own flour and we just go and pick it up at the mill. And that, that is, there was nothing added. It's just pure flour that was given to us. And that's what, you know, we, it's so hard to go back to that and to, to see, to, to find out what we can do to get, to get the ingredients out of all the processed food that they're selling and all that. So we have to try and make our own, like maybe hunting, making our dry meat. Because when you dry meat, it, that dry meat will purify itself through uh, the smoke, like you smoke, your, it, that's what helps is to keep your meat fresh, even if it's dried. I remember my mom had sacks and sacks of dry meat, you know, and th that we used all winter. And one of the th fresh meat we got was deer, mostly deer. Elk, we hardly had it. Moose, we never had moose. Buffalo, we never had it, but it was deer. And we had prairie chicken, we had duck, we even had geese, and we had uh, pheasants, uh, grouse. You know, anything that didn't eat meat, we ate it because they didn't, like you don't see these prairie chickens eating dead gophers like the magpie and all that. That's what we ate was the, what? everything was clean. What about fish? You're from the fish eating Yes, we, uh, we ate fish. That was one of our main diets during the summer. We used to fish in the fresh water. And today, I don't know if we can eat the fish from the fresh water because there's so much going into the river. You get a, you get a cup and you, you hold it for a few minutes with water and you can see film on it, oil or whatever is in there. And that's what our fish are drinking. They're, so, you mentioned some of the, the foods we used to eat, eh? But maybe talk a little bit more about the, our traditional diet of the Blackfoot people. Before I get into your experience of eating traditional foods and living out on the land with your parents, uh, tell us a bit about the traditional diet of the Blackfoot people and how we were able to be fit today in terms of, in terms of plants and medicines and so forth. Well, there's very few people that are, that eat wild meat, that will eat, you know. People are so used to buying and just putting, putting that in a frying pan, cooking it, and they don't know what they're cooking. They don't know what they're, you know, what they're, what they're feeding us. And they put all kinds of spices and just, you know, we don't taste what we're eating. We taste the, the spices, whatever they have in there. We don't know what's in that. But with, 
right now the way they're keeping the buffalo, I think that's that's the way it should be, is to keep them in herds and fence, you know, instead of being wild. Because look at all that, um, you know, the crops are sprayed and all that insecticide they use on that. You know, it's not good. So, you know, in order to feed them what we're, we're used to, we have to keep them. We have to raise them on on their fo on the food that we want them to eat, so we don't get. And we do get, uh, uh, like we do get sick from a lot of the. Even you know the fresh meat we get. If we go hunting, a lot of us will get sick on that. So what we have to do is, you know, cure it. I remember my dad curing meat. He hangs it in the barn. There's no fridge at that time, but in a barn. And he'll, he'll let it sit for, he always says, oh, we'll let it sit for a week. But, you know, you don't. It doesn't, uh, like, you don't smell it or anything. It's, he's just curing it. I wanted to ask you about um, some of the concepts, I guess, when you were growing up and eating traditional foods or eating traditionally prepared foods. I wanted to talk, maybe talk a bit about Akunimeski. Oh yeah, I mean, Bannock. Yeah. Op open fire, Bannock. So, you can know. I repeat the question about when I was young. Oh yeah, when I was growing up, my mother used to make Bannock over the open fire, and we, you know, today I can make it because she told me, watch me, uh, how I make it. And I, I always watched her the way she made it. She'd open her, her little stove, her camp stove, and she'd put a frying pan in front with her bread, and she'd let it cook. And then she'd turn it and let it cook some more. And by the time, you know, we're ready to eat, we have fresh bread, and and it we could taste, you know, the, the the wood in it, and it's really good when, I don't know if my kids will eat it, but I, I think, you know, a lot of people would eat it. So tell us a bit about, uh, and you said that some even tasted like pine, because you Yeah, pine. you could taste the pine, and you could, you know, whatever is in the fire. The and my, uh, and I remember, we were we used to camp up in the mountains because my dad used to cut logs for our log house his dad's log house and his uh his he used to trap that was his living he trapped beaver muskrat weasel mink and uh otters he used to and he made he made money with that. And what my dad had to do was he had to sneak the pelts down because we had to stop by the warden for him to check uh, because there was a there was a how do you say it there was a limit on what we were gonna what we were gonna get. So what my dad would do, he'd put a hollow in the in in his load of uh, rails, and he'd put his hide in there, and he'd leave a few out in the in the wagon, and we had we came down from the mountains. Sometimes we had about four four sets of horse, four sets of wagon. Maybe there'll be three with logs in them, and then the family and the tent, whatever we had. 
a lot of times we left like our stoves and whatever. My dad would leave them there for the next time we went up. And we'd go up maybe April and not come down till maybe August. All that time we'd stay up there. And my mother taught us to pick wild potatoes, wild turnips, wild carrots, wild onions, berries, root, wild rhubarbs. And she used to make pies and she used to make soup from the, from the berries or the rhubarbs, you know, the wild rhubarbs. That's our dessert, that's our treat. We never had cake, we never had but one time she said, I want to make a pie, and she did that. She made the pie in open flame, and it must have come out okay because we ate it all. But So you mentioned the warden, right, the park warden. So when we talk about get, doing more hunting and gathering and, and living off the land, yeah, there, there seems to be like a government policy. Yeah. There was uh, fact that creates barriers to returning to yeah. our traditional way of life. Well, like my dad had his sons, uh, his son, my mother, and he had uh, Yvonne. Those they were of age. So what he did was he got them permits, and that's what he used, you know, he, and uh, like. Uh, by the time we're ready to come down, my mom would have a bunch of dry meat and, you know, stuff like that to, for the winter. We'd get home and, you no, know, it's, we never got sick. My dad got sick one time. He had arthritis. They found out he, well, he found out he had arthritis. He fell into this warm spring. and. After that, it never bothered him. And his brother couldn't walk, so what he did was he took him and he put him in that water. And, you know, to tell you the truth, nobody ever found that. Ever found that spring. So you talk a lot about the, you know, they did a lot of hunting. Maybe describe or tell a story about, you know, traditional hunting and gathering methods. Like how did these methods help to maintain, you know, a healthy family, for example? Well, you know, when we camped in the mountains, that's when my, I remember my dad hunts. He hunts and he'll say, well, we short of this and that, and he either go to Mountain View to buy, like, you know, whatever my mom needs and would be up there. But he just hunted for what we needed. But when we got home in the fall, the old man would kill his, some of his beef. Sometimes he'll kill about four or five of his beef. And there'll be people coming from all over the reserve coming to camp at his house. The women, I remember the women and the kids having so much fun. The women would all sit around, you know, cutting meat, preparing for the winter. And uh, if there's still berries, they'll pick berries. They'll pick their medicine. They'll pick whatever they need. And that is why I learned from my grandmother, my grand, my mother, a lot of these medicine that still grow today, but nobody uses them. There's very few people that will make a brew, and they're the only ones that know how to do it. But my mother was very open with me when she said, okay, this is for this, this is for that, and that's for that. And Maybe give us one example. You you mentioned it earlier. Huh? 
you give us an example? You mentioned earlier there was one drink that claims it all. Oh yeah, it's called tea namely. I don't know uh, how, to, how to call it in, in English, but it's, it's, uh, it's a plant, it's a wild plant. Did you say one example would be? Oh, and a, one example would be a, is this tea namely. My mother would pick that, and she told me, she said, this medicine here cleans a person out. You give that brew to that person. He, she said, especially when a, a young woman has her child, it cleans her out. Cleans her out really good. She does, she has no problems. And another thing is this exocook. That's another plant. It's a white plant, and it grows in the Rockies, not in the mountains, but these these hills with lots of rocks. Uh, that's where it grows, and that is good for uh, coughs, and you know you can even boil it and just rub it on yourself, and and you can drink it for coughs and colds. Okay. Um, there's another example is uh, another plant that grows grows all over. I bet you it's out here someplace. It's called I forget the name of that plant, but anyways, it's for the heart. It's for the heart and cancer. And we we can still use it. If we find it, I'll let you know, and I'll 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 let you know what. You know, these are examples, a few examples of what uh, what we can use, you know, as medicine. And like even when I when we came down from the mountains, I used to go on the hills and pick wild turnips and carrots. I really, you know, we really, uh, you know, we really got used to them. And my mother always had a big garden, even in the mountains, you know, in the spring, she'd plant a little garden and, oh, well, we'll pick when we're ready to go home. We ne the only danger we ever had was this moose coming to the camp. And my dad was sick, and he he told my mom, "You one day you have to learn to use a rifle." So he told me, "I'll load it, and if it comes near the camp, just shoot. Even if you." <laughs> my mom said, "Okay." She's so sweet. You knew, Grandma. That was the only danger we ever got into. Was there was no. No bears, no bears ever came around. We heard coyotes, we heard, uh, we heard the Sasquatch. My dad told me they were people up that way. So what we're thinking about is getting freezers and yeah. them and getting more hunters like you described, have a butcher and have all the people come communally and yeah. gather. You know, it'd be good to have the people come and learn how yeah. to butcher and take the meat home, and so we can start living with one heart again. Yeah. You know? So, what are your thoughts on on um, this? Going back to that, you know, sharing. You know, for example, we have to teach the people to to cure the meat that they're going to get, eh? Because wild animals, you just can't. Uh, hunt them and eat them at the same time. You know, they're not like they were before. We have to drain all the blood out. We have to let them sit for a while to, you know, to get everything off of, you know, whatever they is in them. And then, you know, start using them. And I think the best way is 
dry meat. You know, they used to dry and cure our meat over over the fire. Even if you don't, um, even if you don't, if you don't dry your meat, at least cure it over over the fire. Hmm. Yeah. So what do you think about the freezer idea? Though? Do you think that would kind of yeah, process? before you, well, the freezer, before you freeze it, at least cure it, you know, over, over smoke or... Okay. So, I wanted to talk a bit about um, going back to the bad that beats, you know. What are your thoughts? Have we lost our ways, you know, and our ability to maintain good health through traditional diet and fitness? Can we go back and how can we begin to do that? Well, for example, there's so many of us, hey? And if we do decide to go back to where we were, it's pretty hard to do. It has to be up to the individual to want to do that, to want to go back into eating, you know, eating the, from the wild and, and there's no gardens, hey? And we need to have people with gardens. Mm 